name. But for those of us who have tubs, after coming in contact with some type of uncleanliness, with the uncleanliness of a dead animal, the uncleanliness of a mistress woman, the uncleanliness of dead body, or the uncleanliness of any type of sexual contact, is it permissible to just take a shower? Let's look at that. As we read in the book of Leviticus 15, I'm going to deal with the running issue. The running issue states in verse 13, in verse 13 in Leviticus 15, excuse me, and when he that hath an issue is clean, and this is still talking about the individual that had the running issue, the sexual transmitted disease, then he shall number himself seven days for his cleansing. And he shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. Now, during this time you had a lot of access to springs. A lot of times you had access to running water such as that. This would be considered a modern day shower. The running issue would be considered a modern day shower. That's your running water. Either you did it in the springs, there was a waterfall or, or some water cast off rocks, or in your home. This is something that we did us, the Gentile wasn't doing this. <coughs> Bathing was a new concept to the Gentiles. We always kept clean in the sense of bathing. The only instance that I read here with running water was dealing with gonorrhea. Now that's not to say that all the other new diseases that's out won't make you unclean. I'm not saying that. But I'm only mentioning the one that doesn't have a beginning nor an ending. And that's gonorrhea. And right here with any transmitted, and there are some scriptures that also will put in that transmitted disease. Sexually transmitted. So any sexually transmitted disease, once you are healed from that, from that running issue, then you take you, according to this, you take a shower. I had to even go as far as to research showers and bathing. Showering and bathing are two totally different ways of cleansing. Bathing is to immerse your body in water. The word immerse means to dip or to be in, to sit, to be in a body of water that does not constitute the shower. Now, as I stated earlier, some homes don't have tubs, and I can only, I can't go outside of the Torah. Some homes don't have showers. That's between the Most High and you. Because the Almighty wants us to bathe our flesh. And he only gave an instant to when it is okay for us to shower our flesh. And I even thought, I even had to go back on the, the Numbers 19 that dealt with the sprinkling. No, that wasn't a shower. That was someone actually sprinkling the water of purification on you. Because later on in that chapter said, then you bathe your flesh. Once that water of separation was sprinkled on you, then you bathe your flesh. So then when I looked up bathe, B-A-T-H-E, that is dealing with being immersed in water. That's not dealing with shower. That's dealing strictly with 
immersing oneself in water. Let's look at a few scriptures that discuss this. Let's look at Leviticus 16. And I'm only going to go with one verse here. And this is verse 28. Well, let me go a little further. Uh, because this is dealing with the scapegoat and the sin sacrifice. And it says here in verse 21, And Aaron shall lay both hands, both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions, and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go of the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh in water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth, offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people and the fat of the sin offering shall be burned upon the altar and he shall let them and he shall let go the goat for the scapegoat <clears throat> shall wash his clothes and this is the one that handles the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. Dealing with bathing. I wanted to use that example. That's dealing with the scapegoat. There were two different types of goats used. There was the one that was the sacrificial, and then you had the scapegoat. You had the lamb, and you had the goat. And the scapegoat was the one that did not die. That's why Christ could never be the scapegoat. Because the scapegoat never died. All the sin was put upon his head. Now, if you wanted to write the story to fit that, then instead of putting him on the cross, you would have just had him stand up and everybody touch his head and put the sins of it. But even that wasn't even done by every man. That was done by error. So that totally denounced Christ as trying of, of being the scapegoat. So that's just an example that I wanted to use on dealing with bathing and showering. So, yes. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, on the bathing in the shower, you gotta use some, some common sense too, because y'all know your heart. Y'all know that if you don't have a tub, you gotta do what you gotta do. Because some people in the tub, they be so dirty, you sit among dirt when you in the tub. And there's some people that clean themselves better in the shower than some people that bathe. So you got to use your own discretion. So some people, if, if the issue is getting clean, cleansing yourself of anything that's out of pocket. That's the main thing I look at with me personally. If you don't have a tub, and me personally, you sit right back in dirt. You know what I'm saying? I just, like I said, it just, it, 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 it goes both ways on that. You gotta use, you gotta use some type of discretion. God bless you with discernment. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to decipher between those two things. If the Holy Spirit upon you, you're gonna make the right decision. If it's not, you're gonna make the wrong decision. It's just that simple. You and y'all know that. But you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just feel like that, you know, certain things you gotta use some common sense on. And the Father Yah gives you instruction. And I don't think they didn't have showers back then. They had things that were similar to a shower, but really, did you see showers back in those days? I don't believe you see too many showers in the 1700s. The Middle Ages, let alone three, four thousand years ago. So I just look at it like, like I said, some people get in the shower really clean, they feel pretty good. The key is to get clean and, and pray on that and, and let the Father know that you made an effort to get clean of your impurity. I think that's the main focus. The part of the bathing, if you got a tub, so be it. But if you don't, you just don't. So what I'm saying is, what are you going to do? You going to give somebody else house and use a tub, and they might have a defiling house. They might have to cook pork over there too. So you're going to run all different type of issues. You just really don't know what's going on in somebody else's household. So therefore, the key is to use your household and use some discretion and some discernment and pray to God on that. So the book says bathing, like you said, but if you don't have a tub, you're going to have to scrub yourself like you're taking a bath, and that's just the way it's going to have to be. So I'm just using the net. I'm saying use some discernment. 
some discretion. Because some people, you're going to have them trying to go back to the I mean, I'm just saying, realistically, you gotta you got to use some common sense and some discernment. And it, it clearly says babe, but if you don't have a tub, what do you do? That's what I'm saying. You done bought a house or you live where you live and you ain't in the best position to go buy, you know, a brand new tub. Brand new tub ain't that cheap and you got to get them installed. So what I'm saying mm -hmm. is if you got one, you cool. That's not an issue. But if you don't, I'm saying use some discretion, use some discernment, use pray to that, pray to that Holy Spirit that's upon you. If you need bread, thought that Holy Spirit should be with you and y'all will give you that best answer. That's the problem. Yeah. In the beginning of my lesson, um, I stated this is the disclaimer. If you do not have a tub, <laughs> that was my disclaimer. I believe that was it. Um, I stated that. But sometimes people don't hear that part. No, I re no, 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 they heard it. I was very clear. I even said it more than once. I'm definitely talking about it. I'm, I'm, if my mouth getting closer to the mic, it's be on it. <laughs> and I'm not being, I'm not being, I'm not being facetious. The whole purpose of it is, is that that's what's called good listening. Not just not not being disrespectful. That's good listening. Um, you know, it seems like almost all the time I teach a lesson, and I give a disclaimer, the lesson still they get they they go they go. I, I've already mentioned that. I, do do we listen? So we gotta have good listening skills because it's understandable. Not everyone has a shot, has a tub. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to those that do have a tub because as I stated in my disclaimer, that if you don't have a tub, then that's between you and Yahweh. And I'm just that's what I said. Okay, all right, praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Are you taking that? We wasn't no oh, no, 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 I didn't take it anyway. I just wanted to, to make sure and let, let everyone know that it was, it was stated. Got you, but there's good listening to you about listening properly, brother. I hear everything you say out your mouth. I interpret everything you said, but I'm Praise saying, y'all. At the end of the day, brother, all I was saying is reiterate on your perspective. That's all I was saying is use some discernment and some, and, and too, that's all, brother. I was further in your lesson. What well, never, never hinders me. All I'm gonna do is move on, brother. I ask you, I that's never right. subtract. I'm ready, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise Please know that. Please believe y'all. No, 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 no. You're fine, but thank right. you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, my brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, brother, and then, sister. Yes. I had a discussion a couple, just a few years ago now mm -hmm. about uh, the running water issue. Yes. This person said that the way they clean themselves is they run the bathtub, right. in the bathtub, let the water drain and start running the water again, and that's running water. That's the buddy. I'm like, I, you know, it was a discussion, so I'm just posing that for, you know, for the thought. But is that considered running water? I didn't really consider it, but however, you know. I want to throw it out there because I didn't have a discussion with someone saying they could get in the bathtub, mm -hmm. let the water, because they run their water now, and get in there, right. unplug the drain, let that water drain, and let the water start flowing again from the bathtub. I mean, that could fall along the lines of running water, and the reason I say that is because there are some homes that are not even equipped with showers. Right. Some of them just have the tub and the faucet. So, yeah, that can be equipped. And the whole point, that the thing that, that I want everyone to understand is, is that one thing that led me to meditate on this particular lesson was the fact of sacrifice for the most high. Mm -hmm. I can't teach what's not taught. If it's not in the Torah, if it's not in the law, then I can't teach it. I can't say safely that if you just take a shower, you okay. I can't do that. See, y'all don't understand how important our job is. The blood of the people is on our hands. I can't be up here to make everyone feel good. Some people that don't have showers or probably or don't have bad means for bath may be thinking like, well, am I doing wickedly? Am I? And that's why I said, no, you're not doing wickedness. That's between you and y'all because only y'all knows your heart. But I have to teach what's in Torah. Because at the end of the day, whether people believe me or not, it's about getting the blood off of my hand. So please don't take it no other way. Don't take it no other way. But as the orator of this lesson, I do have to bring things back. Because right now, this is the portion that Yahweh allows me to have control of. And I, and I, and I welcome any wisdom. Any wisdom. So no wisdom goes being 
is, is credited. And I apologize, brother, if that's the way it came off. Not but good. I had to explain that that's why I let that disclaimer out there. Because the last thing that I want to do is is, is is cause anyone to feel any kind of any kind of way or be disrespectful to anyone, I should say. But thank you, brother, for breaking that down even more. Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I would just want to say, I mean, personally, I don't know would not buy a house, I wouldn't want a house that didn't have a tub. Mm -hmm. But if I found a house that I really liked and it only had a shower, I know you don't really see these too much today, but a, in, a, in a time past, they used to have what was called a, like a tin tub. You can still buy those. You can still buy those and, and get in it, fill it up, sit in it, Get in it, work the same way as a tub. Mm -hmm. You just gotta yeah. pour the water out, <laughs> you know, a little more effort. But if there's a will to do the will of the Most High, there's a way to do it. Right. And you have to consider that when you know you're gonna have sex and you don't have a tub. It's as simple as that. So you may be a little more inconvenient, right. but, um, you want to keep the law the most high, you know, you may have to go to the hardware. <laughs> Probably not too expensive because I don't right. think it's in demand anymore. But you can buy a tin or a aluminum tub, whatever they call it, and get, you know, get your bath. That's required. Yeah. And what I also learned too, because like I said, um, I went a little further into, into studying. I only got a few minutes, and I just want to say this that um, in studying bathing, when the scriptures of the Torah talks about bathing, it's talking about getting in the tub. It's not talking about a shower in the in the sense of outside of the sexually transmitted disease, where you can bathe in running water. Now, for those who don't have tubs or means of bathing, once again, the point of this lesson was not to make you feel any kind of way. Because, to be honest with you, this should have been a lesson that everyone should have been studying. It shouldn't have been no Brother Michael. It should have been a Brother Michael. Oh, I know that. Oh, I've studied that too. It shouldn't have been anything other than that. But what I, but what I want us to understand is Sometimes it's going to take sacrifice for us to get right with the most high. If my car needed an engine and I knew that, that was the only way for me to get it, guess what? I'm going to do my darnest to find an engine for my car. If I know that the only way for me to get home is to get right with my father, then it's time for me, Brother Michael, to do my darnest to get right with the most high. And as my sister brought out, if that, if that means that I have to go and purchase something separate, that's an investment in my salvation. If, this is, if, if that means I have to, because we'll invest in books, yeah. books that make us superficially intelligent. I got a whole library of books. But when it comes to doing the law, you don't have nothing in there that's going to help you to better yourself in the law. And that's what, that's what the whole purpose of this meditation and the whole purpose of my lesson was, is that we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. And when it comes to uncleanliness, I can't put there what's not there. Because some people may feel that showering is enough. Well, that's fine. But according to the law, this is what the law says. And I threw that in there because of what the law said and what that brother's question was last week. So it wasn't anything no more than that. Yes, my sister. I just wanted to say, he would not give us laws that we could not keep. Oh, yeah. That's about a lot. If we couldn't keep them, he wouldn't gave them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I do I, and I do encourage wisdom. And I do encourage every comment and whatever the case may be, questions. That's no problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, this is the house of Yehuda, part of the nation of Israel. And it's one thing that we have in here, we're supposed to have, is order. 
and we're going to have order in here, regardless of who likes it or who doesn't like it. We want to get everybody who is speaking, and whether you know it or not, it's a privilege to speak, it's not a right. That's why Ecclesiastes chapter 5, it says, hold your foot. Let your words be filled when you go into the house of Yah. Do not open your mouth. Just saying anything that comes out. And we're no longer going to tolerate it. And it's not a direct uh, speaking to you, Brother Michael, but to everyone in here. We're going to change some things. I'm meeting with the elders and the uh, Morays uh, tomorrow. And better believe, next Shabbat, when we come in, we're going to have some things change. It won't be that much, but it'll be enough to put this class back in order like it's supposed to be. And as the head Moray, I'm going to make sure that it's done. We too many times want to say what we like, what we want to do. That's not what the scriptures is about. If you don't like what it says in there, research. Research what the word bathe means. Research what the, the, the word atonement means or fast means. Research it. But the Almighty says what he means, and he means what he says. If we're in error, just a little bit, we're going to be held accountable for it. And the only thing that we do as messengers is to tell you what the Most High says. You're free to do whatever you want to do. What is jumping up at the moon, being at the moon, taking a shower, whatever it is. If this is what you want to do, this is what you do. But we will not deviate from what God says, yeah, unless it's a mistake. And all of us that teach up here, including elders that get up and teach up uh, periodically, are men enough to come back and admit that they made mistakes. So, you know, just be under advisement that, hey, if need to be, Nobody will be making any comments at all. Because we will not show any disrespect, any disharmony, or anything of that nature. It's order that is required in the house of Yah. And we will enforce this order. And I'm not here to be friends with anybody. I'm just here to make sure that I speak the words of Yah, that everybody that comes up here at this podium does the same. See, let's, let's don't get it twisted and, and get back to this Christianity way of thinking. And the thing about it, in the Christian churches, you can't even comment. You can't even ask a question. Because you won't get noticed. Because they can't ask the right question. And they're not even going to give you their respect. So just be aware that, hey, you know, we're not going to tolerate it. Don't have to and won't. Because quality is not necessary to serve Yah. Quality is. And we're going to maintain the quality. See, I've been down this road before where people just say anything that they want to and get up 
and do whatever they want to do on a Shabbat day. That's not going to be tolerated here. We have order, and the order is going to be maintained. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. I hope that this lesson in dealing with uncleanness um, wasn't too risque. Uh, there were certain points of explaining this particular lesson or going into the lesson that I had to be a little descriptive on, but I didn't mean any disrespect to the children or any women or elders or anything of that nature. And I hope that the internet audience as well um, enjoyed the lesson um, on uncleanliness. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. That's no problem. But right now, I'm going to adjourn, adjourn with my portion of the class. I want to thank everyone for your comments, your questions, your points of view, and the wisdom that you shared. And let's all give thanks and praise to Yahweh by saying, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will reconvene 5 o'clock. And once again, may y'all bless. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.